On February 18, 1992, in Clio, Michigan, Jackie Rose was home alone with her three young children, little suspecting the danger that lay waiting inside their own house. While four-year-old Leslie and 15-month-old RJ watched television, Jackie and her oldest daughter, Misty, washed the dinner dishes. Mommy. Yeah, honey. Can I go to RJ a bath? No, honey, not right now, okay? I'm doing the dishes. And I had told her no. Wait until I'm done with dishes, and then I'll give you both a bath, and then get you in your pajamas. So when is your trip, Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. But she loves her brother, and she tries to play mother hen with him. I tested the water and it was too hot and um, I wanted to turn it down and I asked that my hand went the other way. Okay, did I sign that? The next thing we knew, Leslie was screaming. The water is too hot! Go, go check on him! I ran in the bathroom and our dress sat in the bath water and it looked like toilet paper floating in the water but it was really a skin. I learned that you never touch burns because you never want burns to get dirty. So I didn't touch them. Mom, Mom! What's wrong? It looked like his body was very raw, like there was no skin. When he didn't cry, I thought he was gone. A basic life support CM ambulance was immediately dispatched. I was very afraid to hold him because where do you grab a child that is severely burnt from the chest area down? You can't hug him. It just didn't look like a little boy anymore. Just hang on to him because he's Jackie called her best friend and next door neighbor, Robin Miller, for help. Missy was holding them. She looked at me with such desperation in her eyes that I took the baby from her and looked at him. The ambulance is coming, they're right? coming, they're coming. I just picked him straight up so I could see his face. You really didn't want to look at the rest of his body. You wanted to concentrate on his face. The first rescue unit arrived within three minutes, including EMT Peggy Riddell. The minute we saw the baby, we knew there was no time for assessment. We've got to go. He had lost so much flesh and so much fluid. We felt we could lose him at any moment. He looked up at me with these big, beautiful eyes, sort of saying, help me. We had to get him to the hospital immediately. Though. The danger of infection was monumental. I have to get that towel off him. We immediately put him in a burn sheet, cooled him down with a little saline, placed him in oxygen, and off we went. Nice and slow. Come on. Touch him very carefully. I kept telling him what a brave little boy he was. He likes to call me Ra. I kept saying, stay with him, Ra. Stay with Emma. You're going to be fine. We're going to get you there. We're going to take care of you. You're going to be fine. They stopped to pick up paramedic Paul Wallace, who was trained in advanced life support. Hey, let's go. What do you got? Very 90% shot. When I got into the ambulance, I opened the burn sheet, and I see that he's got to be burned probably 75% of his body. Okay, what do we got back here? A critical burn is the hands or the feet or the genitalia. He's got them all. He's got them all. There's no way this kid's going to live. 15-month-old R.J. Rose was taken to Hurley Medical Center, where a trauma team was standing by, led by emergency physician Margaret Conza. One of the initial and most serious problems is fluid loss. Because the skin barrier is lost, the fluid loss is tremendous. And if fluid is not adequately replaced, the kidneys will fail. I have some bad news to tell you about Randy. RJ's father, Randy, joined his wife at the hospital as soon as he learned what had happened. More than 50% of his body. Oh, no. They just kept saying, all you kids can do is just pray for your son. Because as bad as he is burnt, we don't think he's going to make it through the night. 
and I ran out of the room, just crying. When I first saw him that night, they had paralyzed him, and it just, he looked so innocent, so innocent. He's such a perfect little boy. He loves his hugs. He loves his kisses. I just had to pray that he was going to be okay. Somehow, R.J. managed to survive the night. He spent the next four months in the hospital. In the two and a half years since the incident, he has undergone a series of skin grafts. I think that R.J. is a very lucky child. He will require more corrective plastic surgery, but he eventually should be able to lead a fairly normal life. Misty's my little hero because the doctors had told me that if she would have waited three seconds longer to pull him out of the bathtub, he would not have survived. He would have died from shock. All right! When my brother came home, I felt good and happy that he didn't die. All right! I'm glad I do something because I can play with him. I, I love him. I jump on the trampoline with him all the time. That's a doggy with you. Like, that's the lesson here is you don't need scalding hot water in your home. You can turn down your thermostat and still have enough hot water. It's a simple, simple thing to turn the water heat down 10 or 15 degrees and prevent this kind of tragedy from happening again. 130, 140 degrees, that's just too hot. Hey, buddy, how you doing? When I saw RJ, I was, I was amazed. I never thought he would survive, and here he is, and he seems just fine. And it's, it's great. I, I never would have believed it. The people who have saved my son, the only thing I can say is thank you, but it's still not enough. Nothing in the world could be enough for him. We'll read it out loud. We'd like to hear that. We'll read it out loud. Okay. <laughs> yes. It says, Sergeant Paul Wallace for actions well beyond the call of duty on February 18th, 1992. <laughs>